still working, but it appears there is no hope already yet. The family is having a hard time to pay the hospital bills. What is the ethical action on that situation? We, we will be dealing with that uh, when we come to issues of health and death. So uh, your part advanced. Uh, we will deal with abortion. And after that, issues of health and death where that will very much figure and will be addressed. Other questions? Uh, from JSF, how about governments, countries who legalize euthanasia? <clears throat> Can we relate that to Romans 13? And it is, and it, is it ethically okay for Christians to agree with? Uh, Romans 13 is about the punitive function of the state. It's not about euthanasia. Euthanasia, as you know, is good death. And sometimes described as mercy killing. So it's not punishment. We need to distinguish between euthanasia and the punitive function of the state. But again, we will have a lesson, in fact, a lesson or two on the subject of both euthanasia and capital punishment. So your question is already advanced. Uh, questions on the basic principles. John, John Jones from CLC, what are the admonitions we can give as a church to those who don't believe in medication that government implements such mandato mandatory vaccine? First of all, I believe in vaccination. I am vaccinated uh, with booster. And I believe that that has been useful to us as a family. And I would encourage people who ask me whether they should seek vaccination. Uh, I believe that to be right, but I do not believe in government mandates. Governments should not force or coerce individual conscience. If an individual believes that vaccination is wrong, well, I believe him to be wrong, but to his conscience, this is wrong. I will not push him to adopt a method that will be against his conscience. So I believe in vaccination and the approach by the government should be educational, not mandatory, especially towards children. There is an attempt by government, this is already being done in, this, in America, but now here in the Philippines, that even children uh, even if the parents do not permit, if the children want, the government can. I believe that to be wrong. Uh, you cannot force an individual against his conscience. You cannot rob the parents of their authority over their children who are minor. So that's my position on vaccination. Raul from uh, CBCM, I wonder if you can discuss about ethics on politics, well, in social ethics, uh, after our bioethics, we will be dealing with social ethics and we will be dealing with uh, government and politics. And I think we will be able to discuss that even before the May 9 elections. Uh, from Rodin CHC, related to the previous question, what can we advise to Christians who believe that vaccines Part of its formulation is aborted baby. This is the reason why they don't want to get vaccinated in this pandemic. If preserving life is through vaccination, how are we to advise these Christians who believe otherwise? Well, the, it is, I, I, I usually would not accept conspiracy theories. Uh, the, idea that vaccination behind the vaccination is the conspiracy to abort babies. Uh, uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe in abortion. Uh, I believe that to be wrong and that will be the matter of our discussion next week, God willing. Uh, but no, I do, not be, I do not think that vaccinations were developed with a view to aborting babies. Uh, it's one of the conspiracy theories I don't accept. 
Joshua from CHC, in connection to life, if someone votes for someone who is pro-abortion and the candidate wins, are they guilty of corporate sin for enabling the killing of babies? I maintain that the society gets the leader they deserve. So if they vote for someone who will be oppressive towards them, it's part of society's fault and part of uh, God's uh, social mechanism that uh, the leader we get is what we deserve when we have the responsibility to think through our sacred rights like that of voting. But the leader's sin is the leader's sin, uh, not to be transferred to others in the uh, under his jurisdiction but when you are when you have the responsibility to put a leader in position you need to think through the moral issues as well as the ideological issues as well but remember when we vote we are not voting for the messiah we are voting for imperfect people who will seek to be good leaders within the jurisdiction of the mandate of justice, not the mandate of Christian mission. It's not the responsibility to advance the Christian mission, and we will deal with that when we come to social ethics. It's the responsibility to maintain justice. <clears throat> uh, Join, occupy in the case of mother and child, which would you choose if one life only must survive? Well, we, deal, we dealt with that in hierarchy ethics where you have an existing life over against the potential uh, earthly life, you choose that which is existing. <clears throat> Joel Baktad from Redemption Church, you said that the government's approach should be educational. Can they do that if the facts or science do not support the goal of COVID vaccine? Or this vaccine was not fully tested and they administered the vaccine as a trial program because of the immediate need in the pandemic to deter mortality of the virus. Well, that has been done in the past in the Spanish flu uh, and others, uh, more local uh, epidemics. Uh, there have been times that uh, an emergency was necessary. So again, I do not accept conspiracy theories when it comes to uh, matters like vaccine. I do not believe that these people, when they were developing the vaccines, they had in mind what will be for the ill of the populace. Uh, there may be wrong consequences, but not something that was conspiratorial. Uh, again, Raymond Manai, I am not sure if this is within the topic. I hope okay to ask. I heard a person saying that she already wants God to take her life so she can go to heaven. As she says, she is already suffering too much in this world. Uh, not necessarily in terms of ministry, but matters of this life. And there are a lot of stresses in life. She was sick then with COVID. She's professing as a Christian or a Christian. Uh, but is it correct to say these words as Christians? I would like to confirm what I know or be corrected. Again, just two lines of thought. Uh, first, as I've said at the beginning, it, this is a specific situation. I do not want to answer that because there are things I will not know. And you can only present uh, at best a portion of the total case. But General, generalizing it, uh, one should not seek death because of suffering of life. One's attitude should be as Paul. Uh, in Philippians 1.19, there was the uncertainty whether he would live or die as he was going to face trial in Rome. But his attitude was he was going to accept any faith, although he acknowledged that he believes, he has confidence that he will be restored to you. And uh, while to live is Christ and to die is gain, he says to continue living is more profitable for you. And yet this was Paul who was suffering much. 
and you do not find him seeking death because of his suffering. Death's wish is wrong when it is due to uh, one's suffering. Suffering for the Christian is sanctifying. So if a person is professing to be a Christian, he should have a biblical view and attitude to suffering and death's wish is not a biblical Christian attitude. But next time, do not raise questions of a specific uh, situation. Mon. Pastor, concerning or under the social ethics, uh, are we discussing or there will be a lecture regarding about ethics in uh, together with other religion uh, in respect with other religion well in social ethics uh, one of the things we shall be saying is that government exists not to advance the christian religion therefore we would deny the religious vocation of government which means uh, the equal treatment of, and the freedom of religion that should go with the exercise of justice in society. So I, I will explain uh, freedom of religion as one of the key foundation pillars of a just society. And we would like it to be like that. As some Christians think that uh, what we want is a Christian president who will advance the Christian mission. No. We want a just president who will advance the cause of justice. Let him be the church to my Christian mission. Uh, it's better like that than for government to intervene in Christian matters. Go ahead. How about uh, Christianity coexisting with other religions? Well, yes, that's precisely part of freedom of religion. If you only allow Christianity, Christianity to exist, where will, it, where, will, where, where, where will that lead to? We know from history, persecution and coercion. And Christianity thrives in freedom. Even the gospel thrives in liberty. And the reason is because we want to win souls by persuasion, not by coercion. And in the past, those who profess to be Christians uh, coerced others to become Christians on the, at the point of the sword. And that has never been the New Testament approach to the Christian mission. Any other questions? Okay, next week then we will be considering the first ethical issue under bioethics, and that's abortion. Let's close in prayer. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us of the biblical principles